I. If you're hearing this, please stay tuned. Our country is bleeding. The United States of America is bleeding. There is a trickle of red blood running down her brow. Alaska has fallen. The Russian menace wants to put a boot on our necks. But we will not go quietly. We will not disappear into the night. We are the Wolverines. There are those here in Alaska that are standing up and resisting. We will be a thorn in the side of the Russian bear. We will hold out. We will harass and we will fight to our dying breath. If you are hearing this in Alaska, you are the resistance. Look for us. You will know us by the trail of our dead. To the U.S. military, the Wolverines will continue to hold and will coordinate with you. Try to contact us. Any freedom-loving Americans that hear this, come to Alaska. Fight for Alaska. I'll leave you with this. Here's to the Army and Navy, the battles they have won. Here's to America's colors, the colors that never run. May the wings of liberty never lose a feather. All right, here it is. A long, long awaited part six and the final part for Red Dawn. I'm going to try and keep this intro as short as possible. There is a two minute outro and a insanely awesome speech by Harper, which is a lot about 10 to 12 minutes long, which basically goes over almost all the characters, all the people that played. I just want to give a very quick thank you for you, the viewer, for like watching it and supporting it and commenting on it. And I want to thank Herm specifically for making Red Dawn. And I want to thank Ardut Finley and Harper for either leading it in the, for the biggest part or Harper specifically for doing so much stuff behind the scenes, scenes stuff that you like wouldn't know if, I mean, I, I'm of course telling you right now, but Harper, a massive thank you, dude. Like I appreciate it so much. And of course, Mitchell Miller, who helped me get all the music in this like video and in the last couple of videos, copyright free, check him out in the description. I'm really, really hyped to show you guys this. So I'm going to shut up. Just make sure you watch the entire video because the last 15-ish minutes is me th saying a couple of things and then Harper's final part. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Red Dawn. It's the end. It's final. It's over for now. But just thank you for the support and for the third RB for helping me set this up. For now, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to say awesome. And I would love to see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Keep in mind, we still got radios, too. That's true. Fuck me. Can't wait till this is all over. I can just go back to working on my truck. <laughs> oh God, Arthur! Jesus Christ! Gonna miss blowing shit up, though. Direct front. Looks like artillery barrel sticking right on right side of the orchard. Shift right around the right side of town. We're gonna try to use this orchard for cover. Oh god, Titch's fucking headgear. Right, boys, remember, this is what we weren't trained for. Weren't? They said weren't. Weren't. I'm a goddamn mechanic. You, you're you're used to blowing people's engines up so they pay more. Well, that is true. But don't tell nobody about that. I, I figured, no, no, that'll be our secret. Don't worry about it. Okay, good. What was our town called again? Hang on, wasn't it like, uh, uh, Herseg? Uh, oh. Oh, you know, Alright, everyone hold up here on the back half of the barn. Just post up. Do we have a DMR with us? Mm -hmm. Are we all M4s? Mm -hmm. Alright. Harper, real quick, you and, you and Sherman come with me real quick. Alright.
Yeah, hopefully we... Ah, oh, goddammit. I was gonna say maybe we could use this barn for our advantage point. Son of a bitch. Alright, well we do have a ridge off to the right side of the artillery, so I might send you and Sherm real quick. Oh, never mind, that's right next to the artillery. Never mind. God damn. Okay. okay. I don't know where the artillery is. We have no overwatch. You oh, don't know is. where the artillery is? No, I see it, I see it. They're I mean, behind by I see it, I see it. There's these two water towers back here. There's no cover once you get up them, but we can use it to just take a look at at least. Um, you won't have a van. What did you say? Who's here? Um. Alright, oh, everyone shift right in the barn. We're gonna use this death light over here to our right side and get close to the artillery position. There's guys next to the artillery. Yep, I know. What's death light? Is that like a lemonade? Is it a <laughs> beverage? God damn it. I swear to God, Earl. Fuck Earl! I'll clean this, you piece of shit! <laughs> you fucking goddamn rooskies! Fucking months together, you still can't get my goddamn rain. That fucking Earl. You got them rain. Son of a whore. Ramen, ramen noodles. I love them shits. I better fight good today, or otherwise you'll never have them again in this life. I can feel my. I can tell they're close. Hey, buddy. There's a bunny. My mind telling him no, but my body. My body telling me yes. They'll be good eating when this is all over. Alright, we're gonna hold here on the back half of that definitely. Nope. Oh. Are they firing? Everyone hold off a Sherm currently and just uh, form a line to his left and right. I'm just gonna move up and see if I get eyes on what's up here. Anybody else hear booms in the distance? You think the landing start? Yeah, Roger. That's the invasion beginning. I'm sure. Were you late? Yeah, we're waiting. All right, I want everyone to call up to my position if you can. Are we late though to the operation? No. I think it's supposed to be simultaneous. That's the biggest word I know. Rob, press C. Right, any AT4s we got? You need to come up from next to me. Pete. All right, who doesn't that's have any okay. AT4? Please don't. Alright. Anyone who doesn't have an AT4, shift to the left side. You're gonna be moving on foot towards the guns on the left side here under the canopy. Everyone else, I want the Carl Gustav. I want to aim at the gun that's to our direct front left. It's the furthest way next to the fuel truck. Uh, Sherm and Rob, I want you both to have your AT4s prone, uh, trained on this one right here to the right side here. It's in this little bunker, definitely. With, 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 with three guys next to it? Yeah, go ahead and train okay. your AT4s on it. And then I'm just gonna hit this truck here in front of us to make sure you have lots of extra booms. Oh, this is, I'm gonna backblast someone with this if someone's behind me though. The yes is fine. We're just gonna make sure you're not aligned with Yoda. All right, Bishop and uh, Harper, you guys get the move. We good. We good. All right, on my mark. Three, two, two one. Fire! Three. Holy fire. fuck! That's right. Move quick. Move quick. Get the left if you can. Yoda's been hit. I'm gonna hold up and get him. Two hostiles down by the left. There's still a tank up over there. Watch that netting though. I haven't cleared that netting. Right side of the wrong destroyed. Sit down, sit down, sit Shouldn't be going out too far by myself like that. I'm Where's scared. Clear. Netting. Alright, Roger that. Go ahead and swing in from the left side and start moving up towards the hills towards us. Copy. We still got a vehicle up over here. Two pilots down by it though, or uh, drivers, I guess. Yeah, we need we need we need Yoda's uh, thing. There's another one behind Everyone the. Everyone around uh, the top of that call, Gustav Yoda, because you're gonna be taking out that AA butt position. But there's there's not one more artillery back there, and when I want to destroy that. Uh, yeah, we can. I would say how many rounds you got, Yoda? Talk. Can he talk? Right. We got people inside. Keep it, I got three left. left. I got right, three good. left. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I got three you. rounds left. I can hit that that last one. Roger, we got a little ammunition depot here. We can scrounge up what we can from here. All right, Bishop and I, we're going back up. We'll have this one covered in case they hop out, but, uh... You're probably better off a bad net, so you gotta, you gotta kill it with this thing, then. Yeah, we're moving back. We're moving back. Oh, I'm gonna keep it in my sights. Shot these fuckers. Shot all so need to kill it. Go for it. Let's go for it. All right, three, two, one, boom. All right. Field All right, we're just gonna count that as disabled, I guess. There oh, we go. He's dead now. I'm pretty sure these rounds are impacting and just going All right, through these. Alright, go things. ahead and go through. Scavenge any medical you guys can off these guys. Medical and ammunition if you need any. I didn't have grenades. Oh man. Oh man. Shot for secondaries, though. Yep, Roger. That's a good call. All right, if you're not scavenging, go ahead and move out to the ridge toward direct north, direct front. You can see that ridge over there. Go ahead and start moving towards that ridge. Okay, of that, moving to the ridge. Yeah, we're Are you going to grenade the truck, Rob? I would not throw grenades when standing anywhere near. Oh, it'll be fun. Hey, Yoda. Blast core makes us makes that smoke look so much better. Oh my god. Oh, I know. That's so beautiful. It's like porn. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna grenade it. I'm gonna yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're grenading. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Oh god. Oh god. I'm scared. Someone's gonna get fucking destroyed. All right, Roger. Let's get movements disabled. If anything. Denying the enemy transportation. That's what we're doing. God damn, that smoke looks fucking Denying amazing. transportation and enemy, because we fucked them. Dude, that looks... Oh, I, I, I can't get, I can't get over it. Especially in the white snow and stuff, man. It looks amazing. Black on white line. All right, when we get onto this ridge, we got to be careful. If the AA opens up on us, it's going to chew us apart. I can only imagine it's a Shilka. Sure would be nice to hear it, so we knew where is it were. Here, AK fire, I think. I'm sure they're gonna send someone okay, to check on the I see uh, a small fob up ahead. Yeah, Roger, everyone post up at this tree line here where Sherm's moving towards. Yeah, there's a fob. PK guns. That would be the AA position is at in front of that. Alright, here's no one manning the Here's that no one's actually manning the base car oh that, never mind, there's one guy manning the base currently. We're just gonna set up in this tree line, set up a base of fire. Uh, just everyone crawl up onto the edge of the tree line. We're gonna knock that one guy out. I'm probably gonna leave Harper here with his machine gun to cover us, and then we're gonna have him bound up to the fob. Yee. Should have brought an HE for that thing. Yeah, if somebody else had had a backpack, I would have had them bring HE. Would have fucking wrecked his ass. Oh, this entire fob, man. Or no, just get a fragmentation, like make a blow up right, like right above the fob. That would have been amazing. Yeah, that's what I would have done. Alright, I can see. You, got, you see the guy, Harper? Yeah, yeah. I think okay. Bishop, you might be on speaker. Yeah, Actually, speaker. forget last. Harper's going to just focus that guy on in the fob. Everyone else shift right. There's a barn over here on our right flank. We're going to shift down to that for cover while we're moving across this field. Yeah, that moving right. All right, everyone, go ahead and get, follow me on me. We're just gonna get moving. Harper, engage that guy. I will. Get him, Cletus. Get him, Cletus. Yeah, I see one moving. I done kicked a hornet's nest. There's a few in there. Roger, just keep, keep up the pressing fire on it, we're moving to engage. 
I'm Coming down to the base of the barn here. Contact shifted to that barn to the right side of the fob. Yeah, Keep your guns up. This one, if I can zoom in. Bishop Rob on me. Alright. Yellow house. Harper, how many more you got down up there? Most of them are down. There's one guy that is on the ground. He's still wiggling a bit. Alright, we're prepping grenades. We're prepping grenades to throw over the wall. Roger that. Alright, post up security. Me and sure we're moving to you. Apparently, Helena and there go. Rosa is coming to town. Who now? <laughs> it's on. It's on. It's on the fucking billboard over there. Helena on. Uh, God damn. She's hot. Inglerova. Damn. She right. can come to my town any day. What? Tish, take him forward. You can go ahead and grenade out if you need to. Copy that. Alright, Harper, go ahead and break go ahead and break overwatch. Start moving towards us. We're gonna nade out the, the fob. Frag out. Frag out. Roger, when you're done fragging out, go ahead and push push in with Rob Bishop. Rob Bishop, let's move. Alright, let's push him bottom. Yep. Other side. I'm all the day. Oof, I'm coming. I'm tired. Pull up security for you right now. Oh. Harper's on the floor. Harper, are you engaged with them? Right, there, 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 is, there, is, is there no one in this house? There's a guy on the other side of the house from where you was. I, I hear an AS Val over here somewhere. Or which house? Eyes on enemy Shilka. Yoda, if you can try to get to the battle tower to the front, to the back right side of the fob, you can probably get eyes on it. Alright, I'm trying to cover Oh, you. I got eyes on three of them. Or two of them, rather. Start hitting them now. Yeah, Roger, if you can get to the battle tower, try to hit them or from where you can try to hit them at all. Harper, run! I'm trying to cover you. Yeah, Harper, get out of the open if you can. Just keep moving. One shot left. I'm coming. They got me in the leg. I still hear there's Ace Velo somewhere. Okay. He's next to us, sir. Uh, right uh, right, dude. I'm under fire still. Second one has yet to he's, go he's, off. He's in his window, he's in his window. Did you get him? He's down. He's down. Second one cooked off. Solid copy. Alright. Alright, Shulk is appeared to be dead. Move right, it to the fob and secure the area. I guess we're gonna hold out here until otherwise notified. I got clear. enemy rabbits moving in on my 12. Can I quit and open fire? <laughs> if it, uh, if it shows positive, hostile I'd like intent. some rabbits too tonight. If rabbits show hostile intent, you're clear to fire. Got that open a fire. This one's running from me. I think I can get him though. <laughs> got him. Damn brewskies. Trying to disguise themselves as rabbits. Alright, Roger. You said last thing last thing that we were told by the liaison was to hold our position, Harper? Yeah, we hold out till the Marines get to us. Solid copy. I see movement. Right in front. Down by the building. Alright, Bishop and Rob, I want you guys watching the west side. Harper, when you pull in, come, come just make I sure to watch towards the south. I see the buildings to the direct north. On the other side of the apartment buildings, movement. They're at the rocks at the same. I was on Ruski's taking fire off at the castle walls. The 
advised, I believe that the Americans are pretty damn close to the wall. Treating Rushkin. Did I just shot, shot that guy and he didn't die? Oh god. Snakes now. Yeah. I killed the snakes. Office yeah, building left side of town. Multiple contacts coming to the basement floor. Eyes on. One more contact behind the uh, texture wall. Right side apartment building, lots of are those Russians? Most most right side apartment. Yeah, those are Russians. Yeah, right on the street, on the street, on the street. Lots of them there. More there, more there, more there. Yeah, yeah, coming down the road, left side. Jack, coming down the road. American? No, no you're old. They don't drive shitty Russian trucks. Well, that shot actually hit the tower. I believe that was a hero move. Mm hmm. No. Oh. One contact moving up the road towards the wall. Red apartment building. Left apartment building as well. Ural's there. Come on, boys. Reload. Driver's dead. One contact moving left side of the building. Down. He's popping smoke. He's dead. Right side on the road next to the RPK gunner. BKM gunner. That's right apartment building. He's, he's dead. Isn't he? I'm still alive. Really? Oh shit, we got Abrams is rolling down. Trying to, I guess. There's an Abraham rolling back there. Okay, perhaps. Damn it. Oh, an RPG from the right side.
Alright, looks like we're all clear. Oh, contact on the edge of town, right side. Up on the ridge. Oh, never mind, that's Marines. We got Marines right side of town. Here they come, green boys! Buildings. Here they come! Pirates on a blast squad, otherwise I won't see it. Pop and green. What? Hmm? Over. Did, did you not bring a vest? Let me take a look around here, so I can find some of that smoke. Now yeah, you know, Clay, this is only the beginning, right? Oh, Russian random oh. tank officer got him. <sighs> they got him. Thank you, Uncle editing this for a very very long time and I hope it shows I hope you guys have enjoyed this little small series on my channel it was something I've never done before make like a I don't know like a like a story based campaign with a lot of editing and obviously like intros and an actual like continuous story for multiple episodes I really hope you guys enjoyed and I want to appreciate and well I should say I want to say that I really appreciate your support in the comments and just anything that helped me make this and I want to say a massive thanks to Herman, to our dude, to Finley, to everyone who played, especially though to Harper who didn't only play and help me obviously create this series but also actually helped me create a large part of this. The intro to part 5 in this part and the final part which is going to come after this little like 2 minute little outro thing. Um, obviously there's way too many people that played in Red Dawn, but I just need a couple of names of people who did like the biggest things, I guess, or the biggest parts besides myself, so thank you guys so much, the Third Rangers, thank you guys so much for, you know, basically playing in my movie, or, I don't know if you want to call it a movie, but like playing in this like kind of scripted way, uh, to a degree, it wasn't all scripted, but to a very small degree scripted, you know, playing along, having fun, and I really hope that it showed in the videos. I hope you guys, like, understood that we had so much fun making these. Um, so for now, Harper did a very awesome job on making kind of a outro, uh, kind of like, how do you say that? A, a An outro in a more, dis yeah, well, story-like way. So I really hope you guys enjoy the next 10, 12 minutes of Harper uh, giving a kind of like a, a, a back end to the story. It's a very well spoken one and it might actually bring a tear to your eye. 
Once again, a great thank you to you, the viewer, for staying with me, for watching this, watching this kind of awesome, to me also, new thing develop and how it developed. A big thank you to the people who made it possible, to the people who played, to the people who made the missions, and a giant thank you to Mitchell. I will link his stuff in the description. He gave me all the music I wanted for this, and a giant thank you to Harper who helped me make this final part a truly awesome epic part. Hope you guys enjoyed the final outro by Harper. Don't forget to say awesome guys and thanks for watching. Finley, one of the three original Wolverines to survive the war, went from a simple pub owner and operator to chief strategist for the Wolverines. Starting with the original Wolverine cell, then migrating from group to group, aiding them in getting their own movement started. After the liberation of Alaska, Finley, a noted resistance leader, was requested by the United States military to join their efforts in planning the next phase of bringing the Russian menace to heel. After the events known as Red Dawn, he would go on to be a key military advisor, aiding in the planning of many operations. His meticulous nature, cunning grasp of military theory, and uncanny ability to empathize with his enemy, put himself in their shoes, would lead to the school of thought known as Finley Tactics the tactics of which would be debated by comment sections for decades to come. The former mayor of Ramus, Gonzo, was highly active in the early stages of the Wolverines' resistance movement in Alaska. He rallied his town to become some of the first members of the Wolverines. Following the first radio transmission of the Wolverines, a massive crackdown came from the Russians. Many civilians were rounded up, and as a punitive measure, the remaining populace of Ramus was executed. Racked with guilt, Gonzo left the Wolverines one night, never to be seen again. The only thing that is known is that after his disappearance, the Russian garrison at Ramus was found slaughtered, and captured Russian regulars could be overheard telling stories about the ghost of Ramus. Von Kruger, an avid explorer and professor of ancient antiquities before the war, came to Alaska for a new research project only to find his beloved homeland in the icy grips of the Russian occupation. It took no persuading to make him a rabid member of the Wolverines. He served with distinction in many of their sorties, including the crucial supply drop run and the sabotage of the air-based defenses. It was on this last mission that Von Kruger disappeared. He was seen entering a structure marked Top Secret. A strange, eldritch glow was seen coming from the building before it and Kruger vanished. His journals back at camp revealed that Kruger most likely found what he had come to Alaska for, an ancient relic dug up by the U.S. government that served as a portal to the sunken city of Rolia. Many theorize Professor Von Kruger is continuing his Wolverine mission on the other side of space and time, through the mythos, fighting Cthulhu for the freedom of us all. Femiano Known in his unit sometimes as Art Dude, is one of the few during the Russian occupation to go from non-combatant, to combatant, to major combatant. It began in a bar with a cold Bud Light Lime, and ended on RA Day, that is, Russian Armistice Day. As a rather private individual, he's kept much of his early background unknown. What we do know is that as a founding Wolverine, he was a major part of every large Wolverine operation, culminating in the liberation of Alaska. After sweeping through the enemy to link his guerrillas up with the U.S. military, Femiana was made a major in charge of his own irregular forces. The first Wolverine detachment would take the fight to the door of the Kremlin, led from the front with distinction by Femiano. His war cry, Get it, commies! Come get it! Murica! Echoing throughout the steppes of Russia. Another of the original Ramus boys, Tishner, sometimes called Yoda, got into the Wolverines at the behest of its few remaining members after their first costly assault. The Wolverines were greatly bolstered by the Ramusians, and Tishner was a shining example. A great asset in the areas of espionage and ambush, Yoda would show his mettle in all of the Wolverine covert ops. Many attribute this to his uncanny ability to assume a low-profile defensive stance, shrinking his silhouette, a practice motion known as squat like Slav. Tish was a key player in the sabotage of the Russian-held airbase that allowed the U.S. forces to begin their assault to liberate Alaska. Like many of the surviving Wolverines, he would go on to join the first Wolverines and fight his way through Russia. Some say he fought to avenge his slain Wolverines. 
others for his homeland. Those that knew him best, though, remember how fondly he spoke of Earl, Cletus' estranged cousin. It was his concern for the well-being of Earl that moved him. Some say truly it is love that motivates men best. One of the last mustard remusian recruits to the Wolverines, Noah came at a pivotal time during the operation to knock out their first big convoy. He was integral to the ambush, serving as lookout and signal man. Sadly, the aftermath of the successful trap, Noah was struck by an escape truck. In that high adrenaline post-raid chaos, where the blood can be felt a fire beneath one's skin, and the heart can be heard hammering in one's ears, it's hard to know what happened. Some refer to this battle fatigue phenomena as server lag. His broken body was collected by his compatriots, and he was rushed to the new hideout. He would recover and go on to aid in the domestic ops of the Wolverines, but his body would never be the same. He was deemed physically unfit to join the first in their fight overseas. With a tear in his eye, he bid his battle brothers a fond farewell as they shipped out. She shook Major Femiano's hand and simply said, I would have followed you to the end. I would have followed you to the end. Ramus was his home, so when his mayor asked him for his service, King was more than duty-bound to agree. King was involved in the initial Wolverine raid that led them to gather supplies, a secondary vehicle, and vital intel on the new targets to grow their ranks. After this raid, he would go on his own way to help with the founding of other Wolverine cells sparked by the fabled first transmission. His men worked from the ground up in the footsteps of the original Wolverines, all the way to the battle for the liberation of Alaska. His chapter would be folded into Femiano's first Wolverines for the push back into the Russian motherland. Kelly, the last to be recruited from Ramus by Major Gonzo, a former aide to the mayor, arrived on the scene in time to aid with the recovery of valuable supplies from a U.S. airdrop. While fleeing the Russian pursuit, he would lend his cartographical skills to Gonzo as they made their way through the twisting forests of the Alaskan wilderness. After Gonzo's sudden departure, Kelly was lost, distant, with his service to the mayor seemingly at an end. He found a new service, though, in the Wolverines. He would link up with King's band, and together they would stave off the Russian advance. Cletus Harper, sometimes just called Harper, was a simple mechanic from Ramus. His life was forever changed when Femiano and Sherm came from the woods and recruited him into the Wolverines. His mechanical skills and pickup truck came in handy on their many adventures. So too did his fast talking and simpleton nature. His gift of gab made his ability to gather intel and talk his way through Russian lines invaluable. In the dark times, when the rains poured and their spirits were down, it was Harper who would rally the Wolverines with his shamanic rituals. Some say his mother was a gypsy. Others are sure it was years of working in a second-hand garage with lots of fumes and no ventilation. Either way, no one would dispute his gift of second sight. Chanting invocations to the spirits, he would lead the Wolverines on a vision quest in the woods and steal them to their cause. His knack for the oratory would prove itself again when the Wolverines seized control of a radio station and he was able to send the first transmission. On the eve of victory, the Russians in full retreat, the U.S. military in sight. Amid the chaos, one lone shot pierced the air. Cletus Harper was shot mortally by a hitherto unseen Russian. He died on the field, his last words known only to his brothers in arms. Many believe that's the way he would have wanted it, though. On the field of battle, he found his spirit animal, the Wolverine. Sherm, along with Finley and Femiano, has the distinction of being one of the only three original Wolverines to survive the war. He took part in the early raids of the First Resistance and survived the failed raid that killed off so many of its members. With the help of Femiano, Sherm would get Finley to safety, then contact the people of Ramus to breathe new life into the Wolverine Resistance. Sherm, a frontline combatant, was always charging into the fray, leading the Wolverines to many of their victories. 
Tragedy struck, however, when Sherm was gravely injured during their first supply raid with the new Wolverines. Shot in the head, many believed him dead. It was much to their surprise then when Sherm was found bloody and crawling into Ramoose that night. The locals recognized him as a resistance member and set about to patching him up. Though he survived, the blood loss and head trauma had led to a loss of memory. When he awoke in a Ramusian home and saw the pictures of the family on the wall, he assumed the identity of the long-dead Ramusian. He would link back up with the Wolverines and go on to fight just as tenaciously as he had before, but with no memory of the man he was. This explains why he would often forget the name of Ramuse, his lack of a country accent, and inability to recite the Ramusian high school fight song. Sherm participated in all the major Wolverine ops, distinguishing himself with his marksmanship and quick thinking. By the end of the occupation, he was among those in the front lines fighting in the last battle. After the occupation, he went on to serve in the first Wolverines as a captain under Femiano. Post-RA day, finally having a chance to reconnoiter, he regained his memory. Not the man that he had been, nor the Ramusian he believed himself to be, he was forever changed by the war. He only knew life as a Wolverine now, and would go on to form the Wolverine Society, a group dedicated to the remembrance of their war, their struggle, and their brotherhood. Using his account of the war, he wrote a memoir that would later be picked up by Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg to become an Emmy-nominated miniseries. His direction led to the Arma 3 Red Dawn series, which so many have come to enjoy today. McIntyre, Kales, Campworth, Sharp, Brandon, and of course Cletus are just a few of the many that fell fighting for the Wolverines. For Alaska, for the spirit of freedom in the United States itself. Like so many that fight, they would not live to see what their sacrifice bought. The blood they paid would lead to a free Alaska and an end to the threat from Russia. Their names may have otherwise faded to time, yet their actions in their country's time of need would immortalize them, and their names and stories are recorded in Sherman's Wolverine Society. With RA Day now a national holiday, the Russian menace cowed, many let the day pass with a somber remembrance for those long gone. Yet, in Alaska, there is one bar where music and laughter is heard. Finley's Tap, where so many of the Wolverines started, was destroyed in the early days of the Russian occupation. After the war, however, Many Wolverines stayed in contact, and after the success of Sherm's miniseries, the Wolverine Society was able to build a new pub for the veterans of that terrible war. Every RA day, Finley goes behind the bar and pours drinks for his brothers. Here, the likes of Femiano and Sherm can be seen trading stories with King and Noah, while Tishner sits back listening with his arm around his beloved Earl. Yet... Even for these hardy veterans, a moment during the revelry is spared to raise a glass in memory of McIntyre, Kales, Campworth, Sharp, Brandon, Kelly, the lost Professor Von Kruger, the mad ghost Gonzo, and the silver-tongued Cletus Harper. As they tip back their Bud Light limes, a moment of silence is observed, and no one is admonished if a tear or two is shed. The moment passed, the taps run till they're dry, and the bar stays open till the last of the Wolverines passes out. In the morning's light, as the jukebox fades, they can be seen, ragged, hungover, stumbling out of their last piece of the old war, their bar, the Defiant Wolverine.